Hello, we are back. We are back for segment two of a live stream um, on living, uh, the significance of living uh, in the truth. And if you are watching on the public access stations, you are more than welcome if you missed the segment one to go to the YouTube station, go to live and the live tab or the public access tab and find out part one and listen to that. But thank you so much for joining. And today I just, um, we're going to pick up where we left off. I'm Tina Jackson, your host. I'm Sunita Vijayaswarapu from Galatians 220 Ministries. I'm Steve. And I'm Denai. And, and we're, we're the G220, G220 Effect. Effect. Ooh, that was better. <laughs> 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 yeah. so good. And I encourage everybody who is watching to be sure to check out their, their channels as well. And if you're watching on uh, YouTube, I usually put the links into the description below and uh, be sure to tap into them because they all have some great Bible studies and other things that they um, have going on. And, um, and uh, even Sunita, well, um, Sunita, let's just take a moment and, and I know we're, we're breaking it up real quick, but Tell them what you got going on in your ministry um, that's coming up. Oh, thank you, Tina. Um, actually, right now we are on a Bible study that um, is teaching about how to rightly divide the word. You know, as a as a laborer in Christ, as a soldier, we are to stand for faith and we are to know how to rightly divide the word. It's not for the pastors alone. Every disciple ought to know that. So we are covering, we are understanding a lot about truth and worldview and how to understand the big picture, how to interpret the Bible. So that's the Bible study that we are currently have going apart from the leadership study we have on Tuesday. So as Tina said, check out the websites. Here's the big thing. In September, we have the Youth in Christ, our annual youth quiz for all the teen years, 13 to 19. They're welcome to join. It's free. You know, there's res registration is already open. It's a global event. Um, so please do check out the links that Tina provides. This is for 13 to 19. Now, what happens to kids who are above 19? The big kids, the 80-year-old kids. From 20 all the way till 120, we have an adult quiz in October the second Saturday of October. It's a two-hour event. Both these quizzes are two-hour events for a single book uh, in the Bible. I don't have the time here to go into the details, but thank you, Tina, for letting me interject that. So please, guys, check out the website and do sign up for the quiz. It's an awesome way for you to interact with the word of truth. And how best to know it if you're not preparing for the quiz. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Yes, and just uh, another, uh, go ahead and do Steve and Deny. They also uh, have a website and they have some things going on. Do you have some Bible studies going on right now too? We well, do actually. We have, we're actually in the middle of a, uh, we're fasting. Yeah, we just did a Bible study. It was Holy Spirit led fasting. And what it did consisted of the, the, the prayer, Holy, and fasting. prayer and fasting. The Holy Spirit just, you know, really as we were praying one night, he he really, really, we started to pray in the spirit. And he said that we are the believers need to fast because the body of Christ is in areas of weakness. And so what that means that we, when you're in that area of weakness, to hear God's voice better, what, what what's the best thing to do? Pray and fast. And so we came up with a fast calendar, Holy Spirit led, which we'll be doing for the rest of the year, fasting the rest of the year, uh, the first three days of the first month. And the first week will be three days, the second week, the last three days of the week. And we'll do that through the rest of the year, fasting and praying Amen. to hear God, to be closer to God, to hear his voice. Because 2025, we know something is shifting. We know something is changing. We have to be ready and prepared. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I wanted to make sure I give you guys enough time to talk about those things, because sometimes we can get so engrossed in our conversation and I didn't want to... Um, have you guys be cut short on that so amen to that so yes indeed check them out amen and uh in the meantime we are going to go back to our topic of uh the significance of living in the truth and talk a little bit about, about who is truth or what is truth and we also brandy had left a, a question of the difference of fact Mm. facts being different from truth yes. yeah facts are being different from truth and she uh we ended up getting an awesome word for her uh a word of healing which was really awesome but um yeah sunita i'm not sure if you had more on what is the significance of truth all right so what is a fact and what is the truth the fact is that the, the simplest way to look at it is you know think of a jigsaw puzzle a truth is a principle right? It's a, it's a principle telling us something. 
uh, about something and God is telling us his truth is a principle. A fact is a piece of the puzzle, you know, and it's, and it's truth in itself. When all these facts come together, that's when we get the full picture of the truth. So they are not different, wildly different things. Facts all lead up to a certain principle of truth. In, in the last segment, we talked about the significance and we looked at the verse, you know, from John 8, 32, how truth sets us free. That means it gives us direction for life. We discussed that. Let's talk about, you know, maybe we can noodle around this um, subject. Truth also has consequences. Think about that. Truth has consequences. It is a choice. You know, we are beckoned with a choice. Either we live in the truth or we don't live in the truth. When we don't live in the truth, there is a clear consequence. And that's why truth is important. That's why truth is important for my unbelieving family, for my unbelieving neighbor. Why? Because their ignorance of truth is leading them towards a place where they don't want to be, where God doesn't want them to be. But they are choosing that by default of not choosing truth. So truth has consequences. So maybe we can, you know, talk about that a little bit. And it's not comforting. We think truth is comfortable. Yeah. Maybe, but not all the time. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm amazed by just the, I'm just listening to what you were saying, Sunita, and I'm looking at this, this, this question that Brandy just, per, uh, you know, put out there. Facts are different from the truth, right? And I'm, re I'm thinking about how facts, right? Facts are things that had to be proven over you know proven right so if i'm looking for facts that mean i'm gonna go look for it that mean i'm gonna work hard to see if i can find it right with the truth it's always gonna be right there in front of you you're not gonna have to search for it it's just right there think about it just really think about it in our lives when truth has hit us it's always been something that's been right there and we missed it and then we're like gosh i've missed this all this time because my heart wanted what it wanted i'm just saying as an example my heart wanted what it wanted right because the facts said, oh, they love me, right? Let's just take a situation like that. The facts said they love me because they got me flowers or they, they bought me this, they bought me that. But the truth was they were looking for something that you had, that they wanted. It didn't say that they loved you. It didn't, it didn't mean that they loved you. It, the facts was, the facts was it was something that were they were looking for, you know, something that they were looking for and mm -hmm. working hard to find it. The truth has always been there. Imagine. Mm -hmm. The trees, right? Prove that God exists. It's always been there, right? It proves it. The wind hits the tree. How can we say that that, that just didn't happen? We can't. It's truth. There's nothing that we can say against it that it didn't happen, right? And so, yeah. I, well, I love, it. I, love I, it. I really like what, um, Sunita, you had a scripture that I really wanted to bring to the forefront because when we keep our eyes on truth and we got to know what is or who is truth? And we're looking at John 14, 6. Mm -hmm. um, this is like, this is the prime example of how we keep ourselves in truth. And it's this. So John 14, 6 of Sunita's um, scriptures. Uh, wait for Jerry. Jerry's getting it up there. <laughs> um, says, Jesus said to him, I, Jesus, am the way, the truth and the life and no one comes to the father except through me mm. jesus is the way the truth jesus is the truth so if we are needing to get our eyes and gaze on anything it's jesus jesus is our example what did jesus again i know that yes i would wear the bracelet but i know <laughs> that is old school what would jesus do but what is jesus jesus is healing Jesus is multiplication. Jesus is provision. Jesus is um, an example of love of the Father. And I, I, all I know is when we are in our walk with the, 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 the world, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus as the example. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, you know, how... How would Jesus react in this situation? And he is our provision. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't know. I really, I want to eventually get to this. Um, I want to go to what is really on my heart in the beginning. And it does do a little side turn here and talking about truth. But I want to pull up the first John 5, 6 through 8, because I want to have time to talk about this. 
And um, because this was just really what was strong in me when we were getting this together was Mm. this first John five, six and eight. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. He's the one not by water, not only by water, but by water and blood. And this is the spirit who bears witness because of the spirit of truth. For these three are one that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness on the earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. So, Jared, go to that diagram, which is the next slide. So, trying to just get a little bit of perspective here with heaven and the Father is in heaven. The word, which is Jesus, is also in heaven Um, because that was that first scripture that you did deny or Steve, um, you know, the word in the beginning was the word. Mm. Um, The Holy Spirit, they agree as one. And on earth, now this is different. There's a perspective change. There's a little bit of a difference here. So on earth, there's the spirit, there's the water and blood. And we also come through water and blood, do we not? as humans, right? We have to come through the water and the blood of the womb and, and the water and the blood were just explained to be Jesus. They agree as one. Mm. So there is this whole dynamic of the heaven and the earth. And if you notice too, the common factor is we have Jesus and Holy spirit. That is the common factors of heaven and earth. And on heaven is the father. So is the father in earth? Or did he give the earth to man? Just a little little food for thought, um, because there there comes a bigger dynamic. Um, I'm trying to get there, <laughs> trying to find the words. If any, <laughs> um, it's, it's just with the the, the um, you can take this the thing off, Jer. The um, the enemy in the kingdom of, of error here. And then we have our spirit of truth, which is connected to the heavens. And we have the Holy spirit and Jesus, the Holy spirit living in us. We come to the father through Jesus and we are the representation of the truth that's here on this earth. We have to get there where we don't go to the spirit of error, which is constantly pulling us because the enemy is the dominion on this earth. And we have to pull back and say, I'm staying in alignment with the kingdom of heaven and the spirit of truth. Um, I know I'm talking a lot of spiritual things here and as opposed to just. Hey, they're talking about the spirit of truth. Say the spirit of truth. Yeah, spirit of truth. <laughs> the spirit of truth versus truth itself. But truth itself is the spirit. Like, I mean, you, you I mean, otherwise you're deceived. Yes. You know, the, if it's anything in contrary to the word of God, it's a deception. Yes. And that's where, and that's a fact. <laughs> I'm going to say that's a fact. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, you can't, I guess, you, you know, for me, you can't talk about just the natural without talking about the spiritual because we're spirit, soul, and body. Yes. They are all one, just as those things are one, Father, you know, in heaven and on earth. We are a spirit, soul, and body, and we agree as one. Um, and so we have to talk about everything. We have to talk about the natural realm and the spiritual realm at all times because they're constantly pulling at each other. When you, you, you lash out in anger, it's because there's a spirit of anger that is tempting you and you have partaken in it and you have acted out. You know, it's, it's, they're always together. I don't know if y'all want to comment on something like that, but um, that's, that's. And I, I'm in total agreement with you, Tina, because the spirit of anger is always available. Remember, these are spiritual things, right? We're talking about truth, right? The truth is that this, these spiritual things out here in the world are always available for us to make a choice to choose it and use it, right? And what I mean by that, so in a situation, in any situation, it's, it's, a, it's a possibility that the spirit of anger can be there, right? Say, if, say for instance, you have a debate about uh, the Lord Jesus, right? And someone is of a different pers- pers- perspective. 
and you guys are going going back and forth about this, right? Which is a debate, right? And you guys don't see eye to eye. This the spear of anger is always available for you to use it. It's always there. But guess what? The choice is that we are to bring unity, right? Unity, which is truth. We are to bring unity, which is the truth, right? So it brings us back to truth and what that really means to the significance of living in that truth. Not the truth we know, not the truth we think, but the truth that is the truth, that it will search your heart and find the things that's not like him, pull those things out, and you will begin to see that, wow, I needed that. I needed to know truth, not the thing I knew that I thought was true, but the real truth about it. Why am I acting this way? Why? And this is for somebody out there. I feel like this, right? Why am I doing things this way? Why am I responding this way? It's because these things are that are in you are probably not the truth. And so this is what you should do. Ask God, the spirit of truth, to reveal unto you what is really truth. Man. And watch how it blows your mind. Man. Man. Yeah. And, and, and God's word is, is truth. And um, you know what? I Something that Steve said struck my heart. Um, yeah. You know, when we are in religion, tradition, customs, people will usually say, you know what? It's all religious stuff. Right? I, it's, it's conscience. It's moral. It's all religious stuff. We, get, we have confused religion with truth. Christianity is not a religion. Jesus said, I am truth. And there is nobody who stood on the face of this earth ever and said, I am truth. That was a bold claim. Mm. Right? And Jesus said, I am truth. And everybody struggles with that. Why is it that people, you know, resist? know, curse and, and come against Jesus, come against Christianity. Why? Because Christianity claims everything Jesus has said, God has said is true. There is repercussion for it. Your life choices have an eternal consequence. Mm -hmm. ah, now that rubs the wrong way. Mm -hmm. it does. <laughs> right? So, and pluralism comes along and says, hey, you know what? Let's all live in unity. I'll believe in my people. I'll believe you believe in your Christ. And we can be all one happy family together. God has a problem with that. Because Jesus said, I am the way and the truth. Mm -hmm. right? and, and, and my choice of accepting the truth or not accept, accepting the truth has an eternal consequence. Yes. Right? That's objective. That's absolute. Whether... I like it or not. Mm. Right, right. Well, like you said, Sunita, that is exactly it. Because when people make life choices, let's say they have an affair or they start doing drugs or alcohol or they're stealing or something, that condemnation or conviction, excuse me, is going to come into them. And then they're going to, their whole personality changes and they may start to just start falling into a spirit of lust and everything. And then they come into a point of just hating themselves because they keep doing Romans seven. They do what they don't want to do, but they just keep doing it. And they just have this battle going on and it's constantly this fight. And then they never get to Romans eight where it's like, guess what? There's an answer, which is Jesus. And the truth is there's no condemnation who for those who are in Christ. So lift off those sins get set free from the, the, the feelings of, of the promiscuous and stuff, because if they don't let that go, they will just go deeper, deeper, do more drugs, do more alcohol, steal some more, have more affairs, just become this, this spiral of ick, because then they hate themselves and they hate themselves over and over. And Christ is saying, here's truth. Give that ick to me because I understand Satan has tempted you. You fell into temptation. You fell into sin. Let me lift that off of you. Wash you through the blood of Jesus. Get you set free. And now you have a clear conscience. You set free. And now you live in victory. And a lot of times, too, I've seen people get instantly healed of so many different things, physical things, because they didn't realize that the tension that was in them and lifting that off just suddenly just healed them. And it's like, that is Jesus. That is truth. The truth is Jesus says, I will take that all from you. And you do. I felt for me, I don't know if you guys want to testify, but when I got born again, 
I felt this weight lift off my shoulders. I didn't even know it was there. Mm -hmm. I had no clue there was this heaviness on me. All I did was uh, Charles Stanley. I was in the bathroom one morning at 6 a.m. in a a November 2002. And he said, if you died today, do you know if you go to heaven? It was that preaching. And I was like, well, I'm a good person, you know, Mm -hmm. and he goes, you can go today. And so I was putting my eyeliner on and he goes, say this prayer. And I put the eyeliner down. I said the prayer and all of a sudden this whoof. And I was just like, you know, get cast your sins to the Lord or, you know, I don't know how, what he said exactly. And I was like, what was that? What just happened? Something just lifted off of me. I feel suddenly different. I feel clean. I feel cleansed. And that is the truth in the blood of Jesus that washed over me. And then there was a whole new world of reality that hit me. And I don't know if anybody else can testify of that, but I've had that happen where these this, this release comes off. And I was like, I got to know Jesus. I got to, and then, you know, I said, I don't know how to do that. And I had to get taught about that, you know, the significance of how do you do that? Spend time with him, sit down every day and start to journal and read your, you, you know, read a proverb or something and just slowly get to know him. And these layers just came off of me and I found out how wicked and awful I was. Like, I was just like, I was just like, oh, Lord. And the more I repented and let that down, the more the glory of God would come in me and love and joy and peace. And that is the truth. It's it's saying I'm no longer going to live the ways of this world and the thinking of thinking, you know, this and that's okay when it's a pure sin. And just Mm -hmm. to start turning and saying, I want to live righteous. I want to live holy. I want to have the joy of the Lord and the glory on me all times. Oh, that was wonderful for me. I don't know. And who I also wants to give a shout out saying, woohoo. <laughs> what I mean, Sunita, you had an awesome testimony, what you got delivered from when the truth came into you. Amen. That's a wonderful testimony. And you know, when Tina is giving that testimony, this is for the guys who are listening. You know, this is real. It's a reality. It's not fiction. It's not imaginary. Yeah. Right. And everything God said is real. Jesus healed people. That's a reality. He said, I'm going to be, I'm going to die and I'm going to rise up in three days. He rose up. That's yeah. a reality. And Paul says, if Jesus is not risen, then it, whatever I'm doing is just not, you know, living a Christian life without the living spirit of truth is a waste of time. I mean, yeah. I'm paraphrasing that. Right? Right. There is a tremendous amount of uh, discipleship and um, you know, we, we are practicing faith. And if faith is not based on truth, it's a waste of time, uh, Paul says. So it's a reality. So let's talk about, Tina, what you touched on, like healing. Right? It's a very physical reality. Somebody may debate with Tina on her joy. You know, yeah, you know, maybe you're a very joyful person. It doesn't take much to, for you to be joyful. But what about a healing testimony? By his stripes, you are healed. So Denai and and Steve, you want to comment on how to bring that truth into our lives as a physical reality? Because God wants that to happen. Oh, go ahead. I I would say believe. Believe. Just believe. And and what I mean by that, just when when you don't know what to believe and when you can't see what to believe, just stop looking at what you can see. You know, because faith is not based on anything you can see. It's not based on anything you know. It's based on you just believing. And what that means is just close your eyes. I mean, I'm not going to say close your eyes. I'm going to just say get everything out of your head and just focus on what you believe, you know. And and I, I can tell you that. I remember maybe a year ago, I had a, a, a knot on my wrist, right? And um, it was swollen. And I, I thought it was like cyst-like. My, my wrist would hurt every now and then. And I'm like, Lord, you know what? I'm healed. I just kept saying I'm healed, right? And amazingly, you know, probably like six months later, you know, I hadn't thought about it. I just, that day I said, I'm healed. And I just looked at my wrist and Denai's like, you know, you don't got that thing on your wrist no more. I was like, I know I'm healed. <laughs> and I was like, it's amazing. Well, when I thought about what, became physical. yeah. And when I thought mm-hmm. about it, I was like, wow, man, that is just that simple, you know, you know, yeah. and me, me being one of those people that believe in God can heal you from anything. You just mm-hmm. have to believe, you know, I'm, I'm that Mark nine person, you know, you know, help my unbelief, mm-hmm. but Lord, 
<laughs> you know, I, I, I believe you, but help my unbelief. I'm that person, you know, where right. look past what you can see, look past what you know, and believe God for it because God yeah. can do it. Yes, he yes. can do it. You and I, and I'll testify too. I actually had, um, when I started coming into, um, you know, Christ Jesus and learning about the truth of healing is available. I actually had a scar on me that had a lot of scar uh, mm -hmm. issue because I was had the surgery in the same spot twice. And so they cut the same area open twice and it was very uncomfortable to sleep on my belly or on my sides and stuff. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And then I said, well, Jesus, if you can heal me of that, where I don't have pain anymore in the name of Jesus. And I think I prayed for about a week and then I forgot, you know, I just sort of kind of forgot about it. Cause I mean, it was 10 years, 10 years of not sleeping on my side or belly because of this pain um, where the surgery was. And um, all of a sudden I realized, like you said, like a few months later, I'm like, oh my gosh, the pain is gone. Like it, and I was just like, I have no pain there anymore. And it was 10 years of pain and it just suddenly just went away. And I was just like, Jesus, you healed me. Like that was so cool. Another time I woke up and I had like my whole tonsils and stuff were so swollen. I couldn't even swallow. And I'm like, in the name of Jesus, I, I call the blood of Jesus to heal me in Jesus name. And I took one swallow and instantly it went away like that. And I was like, Oh, I was so excited, you know, so amen and amen. Well, we just, I know we only got a few more minutes left, so let's pray a little bit of healing and uh, I'm going to pray a little bit. And then if someone else maybe can, we'll keep our eye on the time and Jerry telling us. So heavenly father, for those of you that need healing in your body, Jesus is the truth, the way, the life. And he says um, that his, by his stripes, we are healed. He took all our sickness, all our diseases, and diseases of the stresses of even life, and he he took it all. And so we speak forth the, the comfort and peace over you, the healing at a cellular level, the pain to be gone, for um, pancreases to get into alignment, and livers, and, and kidneys, and uh, things of that nature, energy to come into the bodies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that we can pray these prayers and actively things are happening. Just say, I receive, I receive, I receive in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. And, and, and I, I got a word for someone out there. When you trust God, trust God. And when you end the process of trusting God, trust him for every word he's going to give you. He's going to give you a word based on your healing. So trust him for every word that he's going to give you. Don't go to, don't believe everything the man that you go to that gives you the prescription says, but mm -hmm. trust God for every word because he provides the healing. He doesn't provide a patch. He provides the healing. So mm -hmm. trust him for every word that he's going to say to you because he's going to give you what to do, direction, and how to stay in that healing state. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times we say, God, I believe you're healing. But guess what? We don't do what God is telling us to do in the process. Amen. Man, so do Amen. Ask God, what's the process? Mm -hmm. Lord, ask him. Well, he's going to give you answers. And he's going to give you questions for you to answer. To mm -hmm. see if you really believe what you're saying and what you believe in. Man. Well, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to check out their websites if you want to know more about their ministries. And again, we want to thank you so much. And thank you to my moderator, my husband, Jerry Jackson, behind the scenes for helping out. And for those of you on the public access station, again, if you uh, need to see part one, go to the uh, YouTube channel and check it out. Thank you again for joining us today. I'm Tina Jackson. I'm Sunita Vijaswarapu. And everybody, be blessed. I'm Steve. And I'm Denai. And you are a beautiful creation in Christ Jesus. Thanks for joining us.